Chica. What's her name? Yeah. Does it look cool? I can't see. There's a bright ass light. Yep. Yeah. All right, we're back. Uh, yeah. You got lipstick on your teeth, buddy. And we're not gonna make fake bloopers Bloop. just to have bloopers. Yeah. We are back. Welcome back to Pusha Tea Time. This episode, we're gonna tell you about how we met Pusha T. Ah! It was crazy. You get to start with the story because your story starts way before mine. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what had happened was, um, yes. So it all started faithfully one day when I was listening to some Pusha T, like I do pretty much every day. Yeah. And um, like I think I was watching the episode of Martin. It was the episode of Martin where uh, Pam meets Biggie. And you know, Pam just goes nuts. Like she's doing all the dances. She's trying to be one of Biggie's backup singers. Well, everybody's trying to be one of Biggie's backup singers. Yes. But anyways, Pam goes especially nuts. And I found that um, GIF on the internet, and I posted it. I was like, oh, this is what it, this was gonna be like uh, when Pusha T follows me. I'm gonna act like Pam, basically. So he started following me. Crazy. Like what? Yeah. Well, what? maybe he's a Martin fan. You know? It was he dope. felt the vibe. It was dope regardless. Or maybe he just thinks he's Biggie. I don't even know. He really likes Biggie. He though. does. He loves Biggie. I mean, who doesn't? Um, that's a conversation we need to have. We need to have that Biggie Tupac conversation because motherfucker, anyways. Yeah. So, um, from that point, I became that obnoxious person who was like, hey, I love you. I want to talk about your music all the time. Um, and he was really cool. He was super nice. And like, then it turned into like, hey, I need you to vote for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> well, that's a different conversation. Um, so when we found out that he was going to be out here touring for Dark Before Dawn. Um, well, even before that, like, if you've seen her timeline, you've seen it. Like, there will be times when I come home and I'll be hella juiced over some old push that I was re-listening to. And I'll come home and I'll be, hey, I can't do it with that hand. Hey. But, um, so I would come home and I'd be like, oh my God, I was re-listening to this. And he said, da 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 Oh my god, and I would just be hella juiced, and she'd be like, Wait, do that again. And she'd pull out her phone and <laughs> record it, you know, just coming home from the gym or wherever I was coming from looking crazy. But like, that's what it was. It was impactful still to this day. So she would make the videos, not only would she put them on her timeline, but she'd DM them to him, and he would just crack up laughing like he thought it was the funniest thing ever. And I'm just sitting here like, Oh shit, like, I don't, I tweet this a couple times, I don't give a fuck if you think I'm funny because Pusha T thinks I'm funny, so that is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, it's crying emoji to me rapping is incredible. It's an emoji, it's a rating scale. <laughs> yes. It's a Pusha T crying emoji based rating scale. <laughs> but, um, so that, mm -hmm. uh, cause we are literally, um, you know, maybe y'all don't know, but we live together and basically all we ever do is talk about rap. Yeah, that's why we're here. That's why we have Push Tea Time, because it's like, man, we have these really dope conversations about rap. Why not put it on camera and give that's it right. to y'all? You like it so far, thanks for watching. You know what I mean? What so about? it's like, this is what we do all the time. Like I've tweeted about it before, like we can't listen to a song with two rappers in it without choosing who is who. Who's like, who? that's just what it is. So we gotta bring it to y'all. Yeah, so that, yes. So all of that. And then, um, so again, we found out he was coming out here. It was like a, a given that we would be there yes. for that. Um, and there was like a little meet and greet. So I was like, oh God, I need to be pushed D because whatever. Obsession. <laughs> um, because and why so, not? Yeah, right. Like a short, me push a D. Okay. Um, and so uh, they came. Yeah. Faithful day. Yeah. Um, and he was actually doing something out here in Oakland. The show was in San Francisco, but he was doing something out here in Oakland. So I went to that first. And when I saw him, it was like, hey! <laughs> like a room full of people, he's like, yo! <laughs> this is my homegirl from Twitter. We talk about politics and all this crazy shit. And I was like, oh my god, why do you know who I am, even though I bother you all the time? So that happened. Um, and then I was, he was like, where's your homegirl? I'm like, she's gonna be there tonight. <laughs> I'll know her. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, uh, left there. Go oh, got got a shirt a shirt sign for special. I can't even talk. Got a shirt sign for special. So Say that five times fast. So beautiful. Shirt sign for special. Anyway. Shirt sign for special. Shirt sign. You can't do it once. <laughs> so that happened. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know later on that night went to the show. Uh, got there right when he was starting. Oh walked yeah. In, Literally right walked in. I I felt like we had a good ass view. We did. Like I'm a side view person, so I, we were basically next to stage on the side. But. Exactly. Um, it was dope. Um, I screamed out, um, Pam, Kim, and Keisha. You did. It and was. I, and I 
I lost my shit when he did MPA and the one clip song yeah. that he did. Why did he do Greg? I don't know. I mean, that seems like it would be the obvious. Wait, he did Greg. Oh, no, no. Why didn't he do one his last time? Oh, yeah. There's, I mean, he did grind it. He, he did grind it. I was hallucinating. But like, you know, he could have done the whole clips catalog without Malice. I would have been fine. You would love Malice though, but I, you know. You could have done Malice's part. I could have. I could have done Ye's part on the Ye songs he did. True, very true. You know, just but saying. So it was great. And then afterwards was the meet and greet. So that's what, so I was the only one with the meet and greet ticket. Yeah. <laughs> so I waited in line to meet him again, which was awkward because we literally <laughs> met like an hour earlier. Um. <laughs> So I got there and I was like, hey, it's still me. And like we had the same conversation basically all over again. Um, and then some other shit that we had talked about. But then I was like, hey, Special isn't here because she didn't get the meet and greet tickets. And so he was like, oh, just bring her through. So that happens. And it's on tape, we should add that. I can put that in there. It's hella dark and you can't see it, but there it is. It's still there. Yeah, talking about freedom the other day. I know, I know. I'm terrible, I'm terrible. But it was dope because the Triple minute the minute I even like walked in the room, I was like, oh my god, you're the girl from Twitter. You were, just, you were just rapping freedom the other day, and I was like, yeah, like that's what this video is. So basically, he's like, oh, you were rapping freedom, and then he had replied back to me rapping freedom. He was like, oh, that guy's a sicko, and I was telling him, I was like, no, like you saying that you only find comfort in knowing that you can't replace me. Like I feel that same way. So we're both assholes. So then we had like a moment where we were both assholes, and then we took a bajillion pictures, throwing up the Star Trek, like. It was just so dope because yeah, we had like this backstory, but besides that, like he was still so fucking cool. Yeah. And he's like I told everybody the story, like he's Pusha T from the clips. Like he's been doing this for fucking ten plus years, but he's still dope as hell. And usually, you know what I mean, you might meet like some underground dudes who are super cool. You might even meet underground dudes who are fucking weighing over their head and aren't even cool. You know what I mean? So like for someone of his stature to like really be hella dope was incredible you know what i mean even with or without the backstory like the backstory of course helped because you know what i mean he knew we were fans and we had a, some history but like just somebody that big to be that dope was just incredible like amazing yeah our homie that was with us was like whoa it was like y'all went to high school together exactly like that's how just cool that he was it was like uh, you know between the two of us we've met a lot of people and rarely are people that cool? Exactly. Um, so, like, shout, super shout out to him because that shit was like OD amazing and meaningful and like will never be forgotten ever. At all. Like, it just, I just can't get over it. Like, literally, that's one of probably my favorite person I've met. And the reason why I say, like, oh, with or without the backstories, I'm pretty sure, like, he took the time to talk to everybody who was in that meet right. and greet. And you know what I mean? Have, you know, somewhat of a connection with all those people. Our connection, of course, was a little different, but, like, I'm so thankful so for it. We're, we're a little bit crazy. We're a little bit crazy. But, yeah, just being able to have that conversation with him was so cool. And then people were like, oh, well, did you guys plug your show? Did you do this? And it was like, no, no. like, that wasn't the vibe. Like, yeah. when you really, like, have a connection and you have history with somebody, like, you want to joke around and talk about the things that you've already talked about and kind of do that like it wasn't a time to like plug anything or get a drop or anything like that because it just felt so genuine and so real it wasn't really like a business thing and he was so cool that it's like we're probably going to see him again and then if those things come up then they come up and you know what I mean we do that but it's like just to have a cool conversation with him about his music and about the things that we like about his music was just really dope so. and Bernie Sanders that's all you man Yep. Feel the burn. <laughs> Feel Feel the the burn. burn. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna turn that into a new show called Feel the Burn. Oh. Um, next yes. time. Yeah, really. Next time I'm watching Daytime. Are you feeling burned? What can we do that we feel burned? <laughs> we, we've helped Pusha D get closer to feeling the burn. Yeah, yeah. It's just one of the services we offer. Exactly. No big deal. Yeah. But since we talked about the Pusha T story and how he was great, we kind of wanted to highlight other people that we've met that were over the top dope because we have met a bunch of people and not just to be like, oh my god, we met this person who was great. It's more of like, this is something dope. You know what I mean? Because you meet tons of people. They're not always hella cool. So it's like, to have these connections with these people and for these people to go out of their way to do cool things is amazing. So it's like, that's something that we want to highlight. And we feel like 
whether you're a rapper or not, like that's something that you should carry with you is, you know, to have connection with people and have dope interactions with people. So you go first. Um, so the most memorable person besides Push that I can think of um, is definitely E40. Um, even though we didn't meet in person, he was one of the first people I ever interviewed, which was epic for me because I'm a Bay girl and any Bay girl, you know, E40 is like our dad. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Uh, uncle, Uncle Earl. Uncle Earl. Uh, so um, I interviewed him over the phone and so uh, the only person outside of this room that I know is a bigger E40 fan than us is my brother. My brother is uh, six years older than me, so he really came up with E40. Like, he was right in that time, that era. And he was the biggest E40 fan, like, just the biggest E40 fan. And it was, like, a couple days before his birthday. So I remember when I finished up the interview with E40, which was dope, I was, like, kind of nervous to ask him. But I was like, yo, you know, it's about to be my brother's birthday. Like, would you mind just, like, leaving him in, like, a little message or... And he was like, oh yeah, 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 it's good. Like, what's his name? Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. So like, we recorded this whole little thing for him and it was just super dope. And I remember calling my brother on the phone and like playing this for him. And I swear I could hear him crying in the background. I was like, okay. <laughs> but he was just, E40 was just so gracious and like so humble and like low key. And he didn't make it seem like it was nothing to him. Like it was just, it was just cool. Like we were just family. It was good. So E40 definitely gets big shouts from me for just being, I mean, relevant as fuck, yeah. obviously, but just a cool ass dude. Exactly. Yeah. I have really bad memories. So I can't even remember <laughs> the really good ones. So the most recent one was currency. I did special education. Education with currency. Um, that was really dope, just because he has so much music and so, like, so many songs that he hadn't think I'd heard that I had heard and stuff like that. But besides that, because I mean, nine times out of ten, my game show is fun to do. That's why I do. But <laughs> you know, really, she's the plug. Really, she's the plug. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but afterwards, there was this time period where he just needed like somewhere to kick it because he was supposed to be in a meeting. There was already somebody in there. Whatever, whatever. So he had sat down by my desk because we had already done the episode of special education. We were just chilling and I'm kind of like working but still kind of like want to keep him entertained. And we were just talking about like random shit. Not talking about music, not talking about weed, not talking about anything like that. But just like I have like this toy car on my desk and if you know Currency, you know he loves toy cars. And just chopping it up about this toy car and he was laughing and having a good time. And it was just so dope because usually in those experiences like rappers would be on their phone or trying to talk to girls or you know what I mean just doing like hella out of pocket stuff but he like really had a conversation with me and wanted to know like where the car came from and how I got it and you know what I mean stuff like that like having a real ass conversation that was just hella chill and for him to be in the music industry for so long like he doesn't have to be that cool you know the same thing kind of applies so it wasn't like he really did anything over top but just be hella cool like and that was really dope and that will always stick with me like I tell people everybody's like oh my god was currency on the cool I was like yeah honestly it was one of the coolest people I met so shout out to currency jet life what up <laughs> um another one for me was I went to go see a run the jewels show um maybe about two years ago now um and at the time I walked in this run the jewels show and I sent a tweet to Killer Mike and I was like yo I'm at your show and it looks like a Blink 182 concert in here and he was like, hey, Travis Barker's my homeboy. And I was like, <laughs> Blink 182 is tight, but just that saying. just kind of sets the mood for what that looked like. Yeah. It looked exactly how you thought it looked. Right. It was a little crazy, but it was San Francisco, so you know, whatever. But uh, later on, I was walking around backstage, um, or I was walking through to get to backstage. And he see me walking by and he was like, hey, I know you from Twitter. And I was like, yeah, what's good? You know, what's up? And he was just, he was hella cool. Like he, he approached me like I was somebody, but he was, he is the somebody, you know? Um, and he's just a real cool dude. Like speaking of Bernie Sanders, just, you know, super political, like super about his business. Also obviously a great rapper and just like that experience was real cool because he, he didn't have any problems just being like, hey, you know? Um, what's good, like in the coolest way. So, shouts to him too, because he's Definitely. just an all around dope dude. No, I, when I met him, he was just super chill too. It was a good conversation, good jokes, like a good time with him. So, it was good. So, what we need y'all to do is go down in the comments, let us know the dopest person you met. Hey, maybe it's your next door neighbor, maybe it's a rapper, maybe it's a producer. Let us know. Maybe it's us. <laughs>
<laughs> Maybe you never know. I, usually when I meet people in person, I'm kind of like, hey. <laughs> like, so, I so if I gave you one of those, I apologize in advance. <laughs> Make sure you hit the subscribe button, like it if you like us, and tweet us. Let us know what you want to see on next week's episode. Star Trek. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.